It's always going to be risky, right? And that is uh, the point that we we want to make. We also don't want to hide um, the fact that in some cases uh, things are going to go wrong as well. Uh, I, I want to summarize it like this, and uh, this may be controversial, but I think it is correct. Uh, what I hear very often from people is something something along the lines of you know, I really want to use PDFX4 because I know it's more modern. But I have these files that I've seen somewhere over the last couple of years where there is a problem with this or that. And seriously, um, I, I, I sympathize. Um, I know there are a lot of crappy files out there and we... Uh, we we get files that are not 100% okay and we get all kinds of weird cases and corners I really do understand that uh, I've been doing support for PDF-based workflows for a very long time. And so I think I've seen my share of uh, dubious files. Um, but then you just use BFX4 anyway. And there is a reason I'm saying actually my sentiment is much stronger than that, but I'll leave it at just use PDFX4 anyway. The reason is that um, you're a printer, and when you're in this uh, in 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 this webinar, you're either a printer or you're a publisher or you're uh, someone on the creative side of things. But we want to produce things at the end of a workflow, and then the situation is really really simple. You're going to have things that go well, and you're going to have things that don't go so well. Yeah, and the question is not, is it going to go wrong? Yes, it is going to go wrong. There is a risk with what we're doing. PF is complex, the software is complex, the output machinery is complex. You are going to get things where things go wrong. The question is, how can you get the highest percentage of good prints and the lowest percentage of bad prints? That really is the, the essence. It's a risk management exercise. Yeah? And while I have seen workflows or cases where there is a systemic reason in the workflow that pe where people go like, oh, we have to use this 30-year-old software Okay, then you probably have a valid reason uh, not to switch to PDFX4, although I would say you also have a valid reason to look at your workflow quite closely and see why you still have to use the 30-year-olds, but that's something else. But in most workflows, the fact that there is something that goes wrong with one or two or X percent of files should not be the reason uh, to say we're going to stick to PDFX 1A. You have to do risk analysis and look at where do I get the highest percentage of problems? If you would have asked me this or the Gantt work group this 10 years ago, the answer would more than likely have been use PDFX 1A. It is widely supported. It is going to give you the best results and maybe not the best results, but the least amount of problems. If you ask this, this question today with what we know about the software that advanced and the devices that get better, and with the problems that we see with transparency flattening, the answer is no longer use PDFX 1A. The answer is please look at PDFX 4 and use that. And chances are really high that you're going to improve the error rate that you see uh, with files. However, do it wisely. And so that leads to the, the last topic that Christian is going to talk about um, in, in this webinar. Do it wisely. Communication. Communication is key. Definitely, uh, you, you're not going to change from X1A to X4 just over the weekend. Just like you've seen that, that webinar you find that interesting, you say, it's probably the moment that I have to switch. And you're just changing the setting in, in your workflow. You're not questioning the people that are above you or after you in the chain and just press the button and everything is going to be 
wonderful, you're not going to have any other problem. Of course not. Uh, you have to, you know, communicate with the people to be sure that they are going to be able to handle those files. And for that, you need to do some testing. Um, and not going live in production on day one. For that, you need to see if the people that are upstream or downstream, uh, if the workflow is behaving correctly, um, you have to send some test files to see if the result that you're getting on the print is what you were expecting. How would you do that? By using the Ghent um, PDF output suite from the Ghent work group, uh, which is probably the best tool to test this. Um, it's available for free on our website. Um, you can download it and then you can test it um, through your workflow. So that means into the software, but also the rip and going to the final print. How does it look? It's actually a um, test uh, chart where you have a lot of patches. Uh, David, if you could just go to the next slide. I could if... Yes, thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like that. So you have actually here a collection of patches that have been developed by the Gendor group to test uh, every specific part of a PDF that could, you know, end wrong. And those different patches have been uh, aggregated into six pages that you can run uh, through your workflow to see if everything is in order. Um, how to use that, um, it's again, something that is really easy. You have that output suite where you can check everything that is around the CMYK, the spot and the color manage parts. And in the next slide, please, David, thank you. You have for each patch, you have a readme that comes with it that explains exactly what is the purpose of the patch. Uh, what are you testing on that patch? Uh, how is it working? And if you have an error, where it can come from? It's really easy to use. You have to test it, you'll see. Um, there's no specific knowledge to understand if it's uh, okay or not okay. You have patches like the ones that you see here on that slide, where on the left side, you can see that everything is correct because you see the patches that are in full color. And on the right, you can see that <clears throat> the the part in the left is not correct because you see a cross. And this is a concept of what has been developed here. You have visual uh, result that can tell you if the file is behaving correctly or not, um, the workflow is behaving correctly or not, and you get on the final print what is on the file. So I really advise you to use that because this is really, really useful to test your workflow and be able to see if the tools that you're using are really behaving correctly on a modern workflow.